Hello folks, in this video I'm going to continue working on Flappy Bird and Pi Game. So from the last time you can see the game was nearly complete. Uh, most of the mechanics were working and I had a score counter and I had this collision detection to end the game. But the one thing that is missing is once the game ends there's no way to restart it. So I don't really have a way of starting again without closing the whole thing down. So that's what I add, want to add in in this final video. And this is going to be quite straightforward. I'm going to add in a button. And this button is going to be my restart button. And when I click that, it's going to reset the game for me. And essentially just set the variables all back to the start. So the game just restarts again from the beginning. So to do this, it's going to be quite straightforward. I just need to load in an extra image first of all. So this image is going to be the button. So I'm just going to call this button image. And again, I just use that same function, pygame.image.load. And it's within the image directory, and it's just called restart.png. So with that image loaded, I now need to actually create the, this button. I'm not going to use a sprite class for this because I don't really think it needs that functionality. So I'm just going to create this as a regular Python class. So I'll come down here underneath all my other classes, and I'll just say class button. And start off with an init function. Whoops. Init, and this is going to take self x, y, and then the image. So in my case, I only actually have one button, but I've kind of set this class up so it's a bit more versatile, uh, just to show you guys how it has been done. So the first thing is to define an image, self.image equals image. So this is going to be the image that gets fed in as one of the arguments through this um, button class. And then I create a rectangle from that. So self.rect equals self.image.get underscore rect. So note, um, I haven't created this as a sprite subclass, but I am still using the same kind of structure just because it's quite useful. So you have the self image to store the actual picture and then you create a rectangle from it. So then the final thing was to define the position. So I'm just going to use that X and Y coordinate to define the top left position uh, of my rectangle. That's enough to create it. That's enough to create an instance of the, of the uh, class. Now we need to add in a way to draw it. So I'm going to define a function called draw. This doesn't need to take any arguments other than self. And I just need to use the function, uh, I'll add a comment first of all, say draw button, and I'll just use that usual blit function. I'll define the screen and then say blit. So the picture that I want to blit is my image, self.image. And then I need to give it the x and y coordinates. So this is going to be self.rec.x and self.rec.y. And that's it. With the class defined, I can now create an instance of this button. So underneath all of these other groups and instances, I will create my uh, restart button instance. So I'll just call this button, and this will be an instance of the button class. And let's just see what coordinates did I need. I needed an X, Y, and then the image. So for the X, I want it to be roughly in the middle of the screen. I'll say screen width divided by, whoops, screen width the divided by 2 rounded down minus 50 screen height for the uh, y coordinate screen height again divided by 2 and I'll raise it up a little bit minus 100 and lastly the image that I want to put in is that button image that I loaded earlier so that's it that's going to create an instance of it but of course until I call this draw function it's not actually going to put it onto the screen because I need this screen.blit function to be called. And I only really want this button to be called when the game is actually over. So it's fine having the instance of it created, but nothing's going to come up on the screen. And I only want that to happen when the game over condition has been met, because the bird has died and I need to be able to restart the game. And to do that, I'll just put it within my main game loop. I'll come down here where I've got my event handling. Uh, and above this is all my main kind of game logic. So I don't really want to interfere with that. I'm just going to put it underneath all the game logic and above the game handling, or sorry, the event handling. I'll say with a note here, check for game over and reset. For now, I'm not going to do any resets. I'll add that in uh, in a little bit. First of all, I just want to say if game over is true, well, that means the bird is dead. I need a way of resetting the game. First of all, let's just draw that button. Button dot draw. So just calling that function alone is going to be enough to show the button on the screen. Nothing's actually going to happen. I haven't coded anything in for the actions, but it should show the button. So let's just try this. I'll bump into one of these pipes. There you go. I've got the button coming up on the screen. 
So I can't click it, nothing actually happens yet, but that's what I'm going to add in right now. So let's come back into this class. The init function doesn't have to change. The button's set up correctly, but this draw function can add a little bit more functionality. The first thing I want to check is whether or not the mouse is actually over the button, because that's how I want to look for whether it's been clicked. That means that before I draw it, I want to get the position of the mouse. Get mouse position. And Pygame has a function for this. So pause is going to be my mouse position variable. And I retrieve this by saying pygame.mouse.getPause. And this gives me an X and a Y coordinate for where the mouse is. So that's going to be a list. And as you remember, they can be accessed with these rectangular brackets. So zero would be the X coordinate, one would be the Y coordinate. So now that I've got my pause, I can add a little comment here. And the next thing I want to do is check mouse over and Oh, actually, no, I'm just looking for uh, check if mouse is over the button. So to do that, I'm just going to look for a collision, basically. Because I haven't set this up as a sprite class, I can't use sprite collision. I'm just going to use uh, collide point function. So that's going to look for whether or not the mouse position has collided with the rectangle that I'm looking for. So the rectangle that I want to do this collision with is just my self.rect, which is going to be the rectangle of the button itself. So self.rect, then I need to look for a collision. So this could be all the different types of collision. The collision I'm looking for is with a particular point, because that's where the mouse is going to be. So I type in collide point, and then I need an x and y coordinate, and that's my pause. So as the mouse moves around, the x and y coordinate changes, and if that x and y point is ever within my button rectangle, then this condition is going to be true. So then I can say, uh, if that is met, then what do we do? Well, it's not enough to actually have the mouse hover over it. I need to be able to click it at the same time. So now with the mouse, once I've confirmed that the mouse is over the button, I want to look for a mouse click. And for that, I just have another if statement. If mouse, uh, pygame.mouse.get underscore pressed. So get underscore pressed, this also returns a small list. And this contains the left the left mouse button, middle mouse button, and the right mouse button. So again, you just access them with the indexes. So the index I'm looking for for the left mouse button is 0. So if that is equal to 1, that means that the left mouse button has been clicked, which means that the mouse is over the rectangle button and it's been clicked. So that restart button has been clicked. I need to return something. So from this function, I want to be able to return an actual action. I need to be able to return the fact that it's been clicked. So up here, I will define this variable. I will say that action is false, and I want it to start off as false until these two conditions are met. And as soon as they are, I can say that the action becomes true. And all I mean by this is it's just a trigger to say that yes, the mouse has clicked onto the rectangle. So as soon as that action is true, I can return this back from this function. And to do that, I just need to end the function with a return. Return, what do I want to return? I just want to return this action variable. So this is constantly going to be giving back a false until the point where the mouse clicks on the rectangle. At that point, it's going to change to true and it will return that. So I can now access this back within my main game loop. So at the moment, all I've got here is if game over is true, then draw the button. But now this draw function is actually returning something to me. So I can look for a particular value from it. And at the moment, all I'm looking for is true. So I could just say equals true, and that's going to say that the button has been clicked. So just to test for now, I will just output to the console. So I'll say print clicked. So I'll run this code, and I'll run into one of the pipes so the bird dies. Okay, so when I click this, I should get a message here. And there you go. As long as I'm clicking and holding, it's giving me a message saying clicked. So I know that this is working fine. That means that all that's left to do now is to actually reset everything, just basically reset the game. So the first thing, of course, once I've clicked, that means the game over can no longer be set to true. So I need to reset game over. As soon as the mouse is clicked, game over becomes false. Uh, the other thing is I want to reset the game. So that involves just resetting all the variables back to zero, but I don't want to manually type that out. Instead, I will just create a function to do that for me. So underneath, or rather above where I've got all my classes, I've got this draw text function. I'll just have a new function here, which will reset everything. I'm going to say define reset underscore game. And how do I do this? So 
I have a few groups, for example. One of them is the pipe group. Now that pipe group is going to have a whole bunch of pipes in it by this point. So as soon as the bird has died and I've clicked the reset button, I need to make sure that all of those are deleted so we can start again. So the first thing I want to do is clear out that pipe group. And this is just done by using the empty function. Whoops, not like that though. There you go. So that's going to delete everything within the pipe group and that's going to allow me to start again and recreate those pipes from scratch. The next thing is I want to reposition the flappy bird back at its original starting point. So let's go down here to where I actually initialized it. So I had an X coordinate of 100 and a Y coordinate of screen high over 2. So I can just copy this, bring it back up here and just separate out over two lines. First one is flappy, which is the instance of the bird class rect.x, I'll set this to 100, which is that x coordinate, and flappy.rect.y equals integer screen height over 2. All right, so that's those two recovered. So that's going to delete all of the pipes. It's going to put the, uh, the bird right back at the beginning. The only thing left is to reset the score. So I will say score equals 0. However, this is a variable because I call it in here it's going to be a local variable so it's not actually going to affect the global school variable to do that I can either set this up as a global variable within the function or and this is the method I would rather use I will just return the score so remember you can just return whatever you need from a function so as soon as the score has been set to zero I can return that back into my reset game function if I now go all the way back down into my game loop where at the moment I'm just looking for that game over condition I have if game over is true, if the button has now been clicked, then game over becomes false. And I need to also call my reset game function. So a reset game is going to reset all the variables, but it's also going to return the score back to me. That means I can say score equals reset game. So that's just going to return a value of zero for the score variable. So if I run this again, I'll start playing. Actually, I'll try my best to get through this first pipe. Okay, so I've got a score, well, I managed to get one. If I restart now, there you go, everything resets, the pipes are all deleted, my score is back to zero, and I can restart the game again. And I should start counting again. Oops, well, I'm really not very good at this game. Uh, but that's it, uh, you can see everything's working well, and that's the game pretty much complete with all the mechanics. So you could continue working on it and kind of polish it up a little bit more, maybe add some, um, some more images to it and things like that. But as far as this game goes, it's, it's pretty much fully functional. So I hope that was useful, and uh, if you did find this useful, then please do leave a like, and if you'd like to stay up to date with more of these tutorials, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.